Hello and welcome to another KYHMIS training video from Kentucky Housing Corporation. In this video, we're going to talk about the very basics of running art reports within ServicePoint, our HMIS. You'll see I have Google Chrome open right now as my web browser. Um, we generally recommend either Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome to both use ServicePoint and to run art reports. That's because Internet Explorer tends to have some known issues in terms of compatibility with service point and running these art reports. I will be doing this tutorial on our service point training site. I don't want to do the live site obviously because that would involve posting sensitive information uh, onto the internet for the public to see. So we're going to use the training site to pull up some various uh, example clients that we've gone over in some of my trainings that I've done. So after logging in you can see that we're here on the dashboard. Up here to the right, you'll see that it says Art Connected. This will always show up if you have a, a valid art license. It just means that you're connected to the art server. Uh, now, uh, Service Point itself and the advanced reporting tool sit on different servers, so they have to connect to one another. And also, it should be noted that the art servers update overnight. So let's say you run an art report and you find some errors. If you go in and fix those errors with your client data, you won't see those changes reflected on your art reports until the next day. That's because they rebuild overnight. So there are a couple of ways that I can get to the art reports. I can either click right there on Art Connected or I can click on Reports here to the left. And scroll down to the bottom and click Art under Custom Reports. Either of those will take you to the same place. Today, in this video, I'm going to be covering uh, how to run a ART 625 report. And we're also going to talk about running a 631. Now, these are two of the most common reports that are run. And this is because it gives you a great overview of what's going on in your program for a given amount of time. And it really helps you find any errors that might exist. So, to get to these art reports, once I've selected advanced reporting tool in the reports section, I'm going to open up this public folder here by clicking the black arrow to expand it. Now you'll see a couple of folders pop up here. I'm going to choose art report index, once again expanding it with the black arrow. And then you'll see a list of numbers. As I mentioned, we're going to be running a 625 and a 631. Now those would be in the 600 folder. There are a lot of different art reports that we have within Service Point though that serve different needs and report on different information. And those can be found just by expanding the different numerical folders to see what reports exist. Okay. Now I'm going to open up the 600 folder by expanding it. And you'll see the 625 right here. You can tell by 0625 beside of it. This is the HUD COC APR. And then we're also going to have the 631 as well, the COC APR detail report. Okay, we'll focus on this one later. So to get to this and to run it, we just need to click this magnifying glass. Now you will see this window pop up. It gives you a few options. You've got view report, edit, schedule, etc. What we're going to be focusing on today is edit report. This is what I always recommend to people to use. This is because it gives you some additional features in, in order to sort your responses that show up in your art report. If you select view report, you won't have the ability to do that. You can also schedule reports to run, but we're not going to focus on that in this video. So I'm going to select Edit Report. You'll see a new tab opens up. Running reports on the training site is faster than the live site. This is for several reasons, but you will notice when running reports from the live site, it will take longer. That could be because more people are using that art server. That could be because the reports you're trying to run contain more information, and so on. So Running reports on the live site can get a little bit bogged down and a little slow. Now you can see it is taking time 
for this to open up in the new tab, but just be patient, just wait, and it will load up. It's also important to note that in whatever browser you're using to open Service Point and run these art reports, that browser needs to use Java, which is a program on your computer that allows your web browser to run certain content. So in this case, these art report servers, they need to use Java to actually display the report. So you have to make sure that Java is properly installed on your system. And anytime there are problems, if you're encountering problems with the art reports, a lot of times that's going to be caused by your installation of Java, not necessarily the art server itself. Okay. So I'm going to allow this plugin to work here. You'll see that I got this warning. I actually don't need to update Java right now. I'm going to select run in this box that appears. And you'll see it's just taking a little bit of time for this stuff to load up. We have another pop up here. Like I said, this is much faster on the training site than it is the live site. It also depends on your actual PC and the speed of your internet connection, the reliability of it. So you'll see the actual framework of the report shows up in the background. It's populated with zeros to indicate there's no information in it yet. Uh, we need to actually answer some questions in order to get any information to show up. Now you'll see this prompts window appeared. This is where we answer those questions. I always find it best to expand this window a little bit. So I'm going to drag it up here and then just make the, the window larger so that I can see the questions and then the responses that I can select from. So the questions appear in this section up at the top. If they have a green check mark beside them, that means that the question is answered Okay, but that doesn't mean that it's answered with the correct thing that you need. You may need to change whatever answer is already populated there. If it has a red arrow, that means that that question needs to be answered. You'll notice at the bottom right, this refresh data button is not highlighted. I cannot click it. That means that I haven't answered all of these prompts yet. So we're going to go through and answer those. Whenever I click on any of these questions, it's going to populate any choices that I can choose from down in this window to the left here. Okay. Now let's just go through these prompts. The first one, you'll see there's two number ones. The first number one, you always skip. Leave that as none selected. Okay. You never need to change that. But we do want to focus on the second number one. So when I click on it, you'll see at the bottom it says click refresh values to see the list of values. So I'm going to click refresh values here and it loads up a list of all of the provider areas within um, the state of Kentucky under service point. Now, I'm going to go down and the one I'm going to select is a dummy project that we use in our training sessions uh, to enter, you know, fake client data. So when I find it, I can either double click it or I can highlight it like this and then press this arrow that points to the right. What we need to do is we need to get it to show up in this box to the bottom right here. So in this case I'm just going to double click it. You'll see it pop up over here. But you'll also notice this none selected is still there. I always remove this just to make absolutely sure that it doesn't interfere with any of my results. So I just highlight that and I'm going to click the arrow that points to the left. Okay, to move it out of the box to the right into the box to the left. So now you'll see this question up here is populated with my answer. I'll move on to start date. Okay, uh, pretty self-explanatory. This is just the, the starting point for the date range that you want your report to run. Okay, so today is April 8th of 2015. I'm just going to put my start date a year in the past from now, 4-8-2014, and I'm going to hit enter. Okay and it sets that value. Now for enter end date plus one day, I'm going to set that as today's date. Okay, one year from the starting point. It doesn't need to be one year from the starting point, it's just whatever time period that you want to report on. So I'm going to move down to entry type. So you'll see a few choices here. There are more choices 
on the live site. And that's going to be the case for, for several of these things that we're going to see when we run these from the training site. Some things are going to be different on the live site than they are the training site. So this provider that I'm setting here for the dummy project, that used a HUD entry type. Most of the entries that are done in Service Point are going to be for HUD. But if you need to do VA, you can do that, or any other applicable option, you can set that here as well. I'm going to leave EDA provider alone. Okay, I don't need to set that. And I'm leaving inter adult age alone, and then this other EDA provider selection, leaving that alone as well. So for inter effective date, the effective date is always going to be the same as what you put for your end date. Okay? And that's always going to be the case. So I put my end date as today, April 8, 2015. So I'm going to put that same thing here, 4 8 2015. Press enter. Now, these four questions here at the end are yes or no questions. Okay? The answer to all of these, as of the new HUD data standards of October 2014, is going to be yes. Okay? So I'm going to answer yes for all of these. This just asks if um, certain questions are part of your HUD workflow in terms of reporting, and all of these are. Okay? So I'm selecting yes for all of these. So I just highlighted the question, double clicked on yes and it populated the answer. Okay. I'm not going to do anything with these EDA providers. What that means, that refers to enter data as providers. That just refers to, let's say that your, um, let's say that your program took over a program from another agency, um, but you know that, let's say that program hasn't gotten moved under your agency yet. You still have to access it by using the enter data as option. So in that case, you would have to select EDA provider, not in all of these, but just up here under this EDA provider question. But anyway, we're ready to go. You can see this refresh data button is now clickable. So I'm going to click that and we get a box saying it's processing the request. Uh, in the training site, this shouldn't take long, but on the live site, it is important to note that this can take a little while. Okay. Often, you will see this box come up, no data to retrieve dummy prompts. Ignore that. It's fine. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to close it, and you'll see my report has populated. Okay? So this is the first page of it. We're not going to go into specifics of what all this stuff means. Uh, remember, this is just the basics on how to run and look through an art report. Okay? But I will say... This front page, okay, when you're running your art reports and you want to make sure all the data has been entered correctly into the system so that your art report reflects that correctly, okay, this front page, everything in this box here, this don't know or refused column and this missing data column, ideally these should all be zeros. Now you can see that this dummy project has a lot of data entry errors in it. So what this is saying is, uh, let's say for um, social security number, for example, this is saying that five clients have, we have put their information into the system as don't know or refuse for the question of social security number. And we have two clients that have actually not had a social entered. That's what all of these mean. Now, You'll see these are laid out as tabs at the bottom. Okay, so we have tab A, tab B, tab C, each of these reflecting different questions. But then also each of these tabs may contain multiple pages. If they contain multiple pages, we can change the page by using this section up here. Okay, using the right and left arrows to navigate pages. You can also zoom in and out of the report by using this uh, percentage drop-down box here. Now on the left, if you recall, I mentioned input controls. That's why I recommended to select edit report instead of view report. What input controls are is they are basically just a way to do some advanced sorting features. 
throughout the data that you've pulled in your art report. I'm not going to go over this very much in the 625, but I will touch on it when we run the 631. It's just very helpful for finding certain errors, etc. I'm actually going to move this column over a little bit. So now, if we go through these different tabs, you'll see it just collects different information and displays different information about your program. Okay. Now, one thing I want to mention before moving any further is I do recommend um, we have different training manuals set up in the system. Uh, you'll see that they're not in here on the training site, but they are on the live site. If you open up, you follow the same folder structure as you did here, okay, where we go into public folder, art report index, 600s, and then there will be, under the 625, there will be a 625 user manual, okay? You just click the magnifying glass to view that and download it. I really suggest looking through that. There's also one for the 631 as well on the live site. So I strongly recommend looking through both of those to fully understand what this report is displaying for you. Now a couple of things I do want to mention are some of these tabs a little later here. Uh, tab I, I believe once it loads up, we'll be able to see a couple of questions uh, regarding income or non-cash benefits, etc and this will be a good page to look for certain errors okay because sometimes uh, this page that we're about to look at and the first page uh, question 7 on tab A sometimes those numbers don't really match up there are reasons for that I'm not really going to go into that too much right now but um, once this tab loads up we should be able to look at this a little further okay so the page is loaded up you'll see this is referring to cash income range. So this is going to be dealing with income. So you'll see in this table here, now this is referring to number of adults. So we have this don't know refused section and this information missing section. So what this says is that five people, their income at their entry assessment is missing. Now income at latest follow-up for stayers, this includes things like interims. So this is referring to 17 cases of information missing during interims, etc. And then we have uh, the exit assessment, the income at the exit assessment for leavers. This is for people who have left your program. Uh, luckily, we don't have any information missing on those. But these are important sections to look at when trying to assess how your program is doing. Now, always at the very end, so I'm using these arrows down here at the bottom to navigate through these tabs, the very last tab always contains the prompts that you used to run the report. Now, anytime you have a question about how to run an art report or you need some assistance with it, and if you submit a help desk ticket, make sure you attach your report that you've run because we need to see what you're seeing, we need to check your prompts here to make sure that you answered them properly. If you ask a question and you don't attach your art report, we're probably going to ask you to attach it so that we can see what you're seeing. Now speaking of all that, uh, let's talk about how to save this as a PDF. Now in the upper left of the screen in this section up here, you'll see this floppy disk. Now normally on the live site, you would be able to click this little black arrow beside the floppy disk up here to the upper left and choose save to my computer as and then choose PDF okay for whatever reason this feature isn't working right now in the in the training site but just know that you can do that in the live site and it will save a PDF of this report so that you can analyze it that way you can print it you can uh, attach it to the help desk if you have a question and so on now in the next video regarding art reporting we're going to talk about running a 631 uh, you'll see in this report it gave us some numbers but it didn't give us any client information so we see all these errors but we don't know where those errors are okay we don't know what clients have data entry errors associated with them so the 631 is going to break down all of that information and help us find those errors so that we can fix them so we'll see you in the next video thank you for watching